go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, our agenda for tonight is the reviewing of the current ATV ordinance and propo proposals for updates. I'm going to just actually modify the agenda and put public comment right up front. There's a lot of folks here tonight for public comment. Um, so, are there any other agenda items before we get, jump right in? Uh, okay, jumping right in. So, we run out of chairs. Can someone just raise their hand for me? That would be much appreciated. We need to make sure we don't exceed our fire limit, our safety limit. Okay. Um, so tonight, the purpose of our meeting is to review the current ATV ordinance, um, along with whether or not the board members um, have any proposals for changes to that ordinance. Uh, this is a working meeting of the board, and given the nature of discussions, we'll take public comment. Um, I'm hoping to fit it into the first 30 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Um, each member of the public is welcome to make a comment. Uh, each person will have two minutes to speak for public comment. Um, I'll have a timer up here. I'm going to flip my computer over so you can see the timer. <coughs> Wish it was a little bit bigger. Sorry about that. Um, I do ask that when you speak, um, that you address the board directly, not each other. Um, also, if you could raise your hand, I'll call on you to speak. If I, if you have your hand raised while someone else does and I make eye contact and I know your name, I will write your name down, okay? Um, so you don't have to keep your hand up all night. Um, please, when you do, when I do call on you to speak, um, state your name your association with any town, road, club, committee, whatever your interest is, if it's applicable. Um, as hard as it may be when someone makes a comment, please don't respond to that comment. And troublemakers in the back, talking to you. Just kidding, Pastor Al. <laughs> I missed my opportunities to harass you. Um, <laughs> so uh, if somebody does say something that you don't like, please just listen. You know, we need to be respectful of each other. We all live in the same community. We're all here to listen. Um, please listen to each other. Um, if a statement has already been made by a prior speaker, <clears throat> no need to repeat the statement. Um, we hear you, we he hear each of you, um, and saying the same thing multiple times doesn't negate the fact that we heard some of the first time. So, um, in the sake, for the sake of time, that would be much appreciated. Um, again, be respectful. Uh, I do have a little caveat here. If things do, you know, get a little out of hand and things do get a little bit heated, um, tempers flare, whatever the case may be. Um, or me as chair, I'm not being respected in asking you to stop. Uh, we will end the meeting. So we will abruptly end. So I don't expect that will be the case, but I just want to state it up front in case we get to that point. Um, and then we are going to have a three hour max. So if we're still sitting in this room at 10 o'clock, we're going to call it. Okay. Uh, we'll do it again another time. Yeah. Uh, any comments from the board? Brian? Uh, a request from GMA TV, uh, GMA TV, the Green Mountain Access TV, not the ATV writers. Uh, but uh, Green Mountain Access TV has asked that if you're getting up to speak, if you can approach the microphone, you know, it's not the kind of microphone you have to be right in front of to speak into, but those of you in the back probably would not be picked up by the, the microphone. So the microphone here in the middle, if you can come up, you know, reasonably close to it when you're speaking, uh, that'll help make your uh, your voice heard for those watching at home and uh, for preservation. Okay, thanks, Brian. Um, and thank you for putting that well-documented packet together. I know it wasn't easy, so much appreciated. Okay, um, so that being said, we're gonna open up to public comment if anyone would like to speak. Um, 
Kenny, first up, I'm going to turn this around just so you can see it. You don't care. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn it so I can see it then. All right, good. Ken Toronto, Johnson Village resident. Um, also a trail master for Green Mountain ATV riders. I started this mess by asking for the village. Um, I asked for the village for residents, not for the club or Bass Head. Let's make that clear. <laughs> I approached the prior board about coming down into the village. Can't remember how many years ago. Um, not the village actually, to get down from Clay Hill to Ghoul Hill so we could access Tom Foster's property and the uh, industrial light park across from Dallas. Um, we come and ask the board if we could access the property once we got there. They allowed us to come down a small section of Bay Hill to get to Ghoul Hill. Um, at that time, we also asked, we're right here, can we get to Subway, help the business? They allowed that. I believe that went off with no hitches whatsoever. That was two or three years, I would say. Um, I asked to connect to cross the river, the Moyle River. A lot of residents over there that own ATVs and have to buy a trailer and haul their ATV, I don't know, half a mile across the road to be able to access every other resident. We asked for a trial at town meeting. No opposition at town meeting. Board approved trial period. Uh, several members that aren't on the board actually motioned and seconded to happen. I believe it went off with no hitch and no problems. And we want to continue. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> My name is Robert Griswold and I live up on Route 100 C and I would like to see the trail expanded to cover us so we can come down 100 C and get down to these gas stations and facilities down here. Because it ends just before my road. So I have to trail her up to come a mile. Thank you. That's so, Katie Arts, I live on Gould Hill. We actually have a property that, that is on the corner of Gould Hill and Drag Lock. So, everyone that comes out of Gould Hill to come down to Jolly's goes around down Drag Lock. Um, we've had no issues. It's actually with the last year with the village being opened, we saw very little traffic coming down to the village. But it's nice to be able to get to Maplefield versus getting Jolly all the business. Um, so, I would argue that we keep the village open. If you guys don't want the village open, then I would say at bare, bare minimum, we need to have full bill open so that we have access to gas. And there's really no reason to not drive the little bit of clay hill that's paved to get to Gold Hill to stay on the page. Maria? Hi, I'm Maria Jennison. I don't have any affiliation with ATV things and I don't ride them. So I was interested to see how it turned out when we'd be seeing them more on our roadways. And I'm a pedestrian. I jog, I walk, I use the roads that the ATVs use quite a bit. And in every instance that I came across an ATVer, they, the, the roads were well marked with signage. The riders or drivers were following the rules. When they'd see us on the side of the road, they'd slow down. They usually waved and they were really friendly and it made me feel just fine that they were out there with us. So. Yeah. Up. Yeah, it's my brother. Absolutely no problem with them. They just to slow down. They put all kinds of stuff or uh, slow down sides of the road. They do a great job. And they slide that. Nicely. And you're talking about this in so relation? The, I'm, I'm talking about this is at home, just saying they're, they're, they're responsible people. That's what they're doing. I'm hoping for it. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Yep. Um, Spencer Leggett, Johnson resident, also the vice president of Green County TV Writers. Um, I actually live on uh, over the bridge, over the mile. On the other side, like Ken was saying, um, 
and uh, having the village open obviously last year gave me access to leave from directly from my house and come down and I've been numerous times me and multiple buddies would go to the maple fields and you know would spend money on drinks gas and food for the day and then it was a pretty cool thing to be able to leave from Johnson and go all the way to like towns like Newport like Orleans and all that. Uh, um, and uh, you know, I know that so we didn't get the town open until I believe like July this past summer. And um, I know there's been some seems like kind of misconception that maybe us as a club were trying to almost hide it, put it down, like not put out to the public that we were opening. Um, I just want to say that we put it on our local maps, our ride command app that most riders download so they can see that was open. Um, we shared it to other local and clubs, like Borderline Ridge Runners who has over 3,000 members, I believe. So um, I think it's going to be, a, you know, maybe a little slower traffic till maybe eventually we can make kind of a loop out of Johnson, but that could be down the road, obviously. But I feel like um, it did help, you know, some local businesses, maybe downtown and stuff. I know parking can be kind of an issue in the village. Um, as far as I know, there wasn't too many incidents or any incidents of, you know, an accident or anything like that. So, yeah, just looking to hopefully maybe get it stay open or try whatever we need to do and make it go for it. Thank you. Thanks, sir. I'm Lois Fry, and I don't have an ATV. Um, over the years, I've always found the ATV is to be respectful when I've met them up on Cotton Hollow Road and places like that. My concern with the ordinance is that I believe we need to have clarification on enforcement because, as a citizen, I have no sense of who I'm supposed to contact. There's no way I can get a picture. Right now, there's ATVs on the road and uh, periodically up our way. And I thought it didn't open until May 15th. But it's the communication about what's going on with, will help everybody, the riders and um, those of us who bump into folks sometimes with the wind. I want to wish everybody well with it, but we have got to be respectful. The noise sometimes on Clay Hill is unbelievable because I'm in that one section of Zumba. Thanks, Lois. <coughs> Neil? Neil Shepherd up in Clay Hill, where we have a lot of riders. And maybe I'll just pick up from where Lois left off. I sent a letter to his board, talked about what I thought was kind of a conflict between two ordinances, you have one about noise ordinance, which guarantees the right to peace and quiet for everybody. And then the ATV ordinance, which allows noise for <coughs> ATV riders to the detriment of some of the landowners whose property abuts where they ride. And so I think that's a, a real problem and one that I hope you guys will try to address and solve if you can. The decibels, of an ATV, I mean, it's anywhere from between 85 to 100. We can argue this back and forth, but it's uh, compounded by the number of ATVs riding together. So that's something you might look at since you're kind of revisiting the ordinance, how many riders at one time, whether they loiter, whether they gather in places as they sometimes do to meet friends and how long they stay. I know these are all things that were in the ad hoc committee's recommendations back in 2006, which were ignored, but those were things that tried to address noise issues. And then the speed limits. I appreciated um, the signs that go up uh, talking about sensitive areas where they uh, have 15 mile an hour speed limit. And, you know, it's, it's less noisy when they're slower and when there are less ATVs riding together. And then finally, enforcement. Okay. I just think you need to really address that and find a way to get law enforcement on it um, and send you some of the money from VASA to do that. And I think it's a real problem since the sheriff's office has said they can't enforce it or they won't. So these are things I hope you address. Thanks. Thanks, Lois. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Lois. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Lois. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Lois. Thanks, Neil.
now. Yep, also following up on what Lois and Neil just said is enforcement. I live on Sinclair Road and I called um, the sheriffs because I was told that was the thing to do every time one went in front of my house last summer because they're not allowed on that road and there is no way to enforce it. Like I was told to take pictures, but if I'm in my house and see them go by, I can't get out and take pictures soon enough. One of the times I called the sheriffs, they came, which I wasn't expecting. And then we had a conversation about the ambiguity of all the laws. And, and they basically said there was nothing they could do. And I read something about from the state that is about ATV laws. And I've read that it, it has to be enforceable. So if it's not enforceable, I don't see how it can be possible to allow it to happen. I also just want a second meal on the amount of noise when there are multiple people going by and the music that blares out of them. Um, if this was a few ATVs going by, like I have, um, what do you call them, dirt bikes going that go by my house to get to the class four part of my road, you know, town highway 35. They're fast, they go by, it's like any other vehicle basically. They're louder, I don't care. But when you have these huge amounts of these going together, it, it is, it's unbearable. And we do have a right to peace in our homes, especially when we buy a place that we think is peaceful and then this impacts that and changes our lives. Thank you. Yep. My name is Doug Collins, Labor and Johnson. Uh, to my knowledge, we've done nothing but bring money into the town. As well as the class four roads that surround. We've done a lot of work for the class four roads as far as water runoff. We're the most respectful group I can think of. Uh, Thanks, sir. Yep. Uh, Sue Bobbering, I know you don't want to hear the same thing over and over again, but I do want to back up folks and Neil and Jen said perfectly true. Um, ATVs are not allowed on my road, but they're there. And I would point out that if you pay the high taxes to live out in the sticks because you want to be peaceful, you should be able to do that. Um, the other thing is I kind of object to using the, uh, we spend a lot of money in town, economic development and all of that approach because buying a sandwich at Maple Fields doesn't make that much difference here. Not as much as my tax dollar does. Thank you. Sue. Yep. Uh, Bob, if you could just pull off where someone else go. Shane. I think Kyle ran up first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Huh? I lose I'm a um, business owner here in the village. I live in the village and I'm a former select board member. So when I was on the select board, I was one of the voting members that did um, approve for the trial period. Um, I did that for two reasons. One, I thought on good faith that we were doing that legally, which we have since found out that was not legal. Um, I was aware of that at the time and regret not having asked that question. Number two, I had faith in this um, the group of people here at this club, that they were going to um, truly do a trial period that would bring ATVs into our village and spend money and boost our, you know, our local economy like they said they would, as being one of the major benefits of letting ATVs into the town, into the village. Um, I was suspect when I thought it was very strange when the summer progressed and I didn't see any or very few ATVs in the village and spending money in our village. I then went to a village meeting where um, it was admitted in a public meeting that, um, that they were purposely laying low in order to get the ordinance permanently changed to open the downtown. I then came to another meeting where it was also confirmed that this was what was actually happening, that the club was telling 
their writers, 30 maybe, seconds. Okay, maybe not publicly, but definitely privately, not to come into the village, to not cause trouble, so that this ordinance will get changed permanently. So I feel like the wool has been pulled over our eyes that we've been neat, and that this um, this good faith that I had is is no longer there. So I just wanted to point that out for maybe the third meeting in a row. Thanks, girl. Shane? Shane Spence, uh, Johnson resident and the you know, faith coordinator. Um, I just wanted to speak on uh, that regard at first, just to mention that every year uh, the ATV riders do a great job of helping out Green Bay. They fill up a full truck in each of the towns that they cover. And I think that's a very important thing and, and should not go. Uh, Forgotten here. I also think that I, I hear other people's uh, concerns when it comes to you know having peace in their homes and, and all this. I myself have not experienced uh, you know the, the loud noises from the ATVs. Um, I have experienced a lot of loud noises from cars and from eighteen wheelers and other types of things going down our roads here in the village. And you know I, I wish that there were things that we could do to address those types of things but i think people have a right to transportation and if an atv is the way that people get around rural vermont then i think that's something that we need to address and we need to accommodate um, it might be that we need some clarification it might be that we need to come up with a better way of creating a trail system but i think uh ultimately we should be welcoming the atv or since town and they've been good neighbors so far so thank you Shane. Thanks, everybody. Thanks everyone for speaking. I don't want to repeat what everyone else uh, has said, but much that I agree with a whole lot of what Lois and Sue and Leo and Kyle <coughs> and uh, something Sue said that her road is not uh, part of any extension that was granted, and yet people use her road. And I just want to say the same, same for mine. Uh, see people come down all the time in the summer to get to clay, then went down to Little Hill, and it is it's super noisy. And it was uh, it all sort of heated up the numbers and the noise right after that clay old extension was uh, first granted. But like um, Kyle and some others said, things got real low with the whole village railroad street thing. And last summer there was a market uh, difference. And there were less riders than there were the two previous summers, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. So no, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Ken. There's something I was looking past. I'm Gina Johnson. I live on a I wrote. I am a writer. I feel like that um, we should have a right. We work hard. We should build the flex when we want. And I'm sorry that people hate me well on the road mention. I follow the rules. And um, I just don't really feel that it's fair to take away from the people that are following the rules. I'm a taxpayer too, and I pay a lot of money. So that's just how I feel about it. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> Anyone else who hasn't yet spoken? <clears throat> well, sure. Will Jensen, um, you brought me on Clay Hill and I live on Main Street. So half my life I'm on Clay Hill before ATVs were even down the roads. Uh, the biggest thing I saw back then was everybody's going 80 miles an hour because they might get caught. Um, now I see the, I was in the tree stand last fall, had a young kid screwing up. Spinning around, some of that. I made a call to Kenny. Uh, before I get out of the tree stand, Kenny had already knew who it was, contacted the kid, and shoot him out. Um, I think that's kind of being responsible for a member uh, living on Main Street. Uh, Shane's comment about trucks and those kids, those four bangers running around with exhaust half hanging off, are way louder than those ATV years were. And if anything, they actually slowed traffic down on Main Street because they're actually doing the speed limit, uh, whereas I say, Myself included, probably 85% of people went to 15 are not doing so well. 
So that's that's my experience. I don't have any association with the clubs or or I got an ATV. I go get deer with as they don't wear any trails. So it's, it's uh, I know as a as a board member, I really think there's a weight to people who are talking about these ATVs on roads that are not part of this discussion. You really can't weigh in on that. Really. You, you're not going to control that when you do a decision here for the road they have been on or the court of denied the roads they have been on. That, that's not going to change those roads. So the weight of that is it's disturbing stuff like that, but that has nothing to do with this decision. I think so. Yep. I'm Cheryl Weston. I live on Moon Hill. I actually live on the drag law, though. Um, being on a class four road, I have to do the maintenance on it uh, to keep it smooth. And that was the trail going down through. I never really had any damage per se. I mean, and people treated it with respect. Uh, it's I, I have animals that run around and some dogs aren't on the leash, but it's uh, it's uh, they've been pretty good up there. And as a old feller like myself, I don't mind coming down and getting fuel down in the village. That's just my concern. Thanks. Thanks, Daryl. Okay. Uh, let's see. Anyone else? Last call for first time speakers. Mark, do you want to add anything on ATVs since you just showed up? Okay, you have two minutes. The bolt push. Move to the mic, please. Yeah, you could. <clears throat> so for me coming in late, the bolt was 700 to 300 on ATVs? 500. 500? Well, there's been a few different votes. It depends on what, what vote you're talking about, but continue. So if the majority of the people are in favor of it, the board should be speaking on everybody our taxpayers. I don't know why this meeting didn't be coming up. Because you guys are all the voice for the taxpayers of Johnson. If the majority of the vote was in favor, then this meeting is pretty much useless to me because you guys should be all looking out for the taxpayers. If you're sitting where you're sitting, it's not your voice, it's a taxpayer's voice that should be killed. I feel. Okay. Right? This is your time to speak. We're going to talk about the ordinance, no matter what you say. So if you would like to say more, by all means. That's what I want to say. Just you guys are the voice of the taxpayers. The majority of the vote was in favor of being on Main Street. That's where they should be. I'll do some clarification on what. The votes have been in the past in a few minutes, but okay. Thanks, Mark. Anyone else? Okay, Bobby, you're up. Well, I know we're all probably against heroin addicts. I, mean, I had to throw a whole bunch of them out from the, from the laundry mat when I came back to town last fall. If I didn't, I wouldn't have slept. <laughs> it's all night long, they're staying up and they're there. I put up a fuss just like Sandy did on our road. Okay. If they're going too fast, trust me, can't hear that. <laughs> she ain't afraid to tell you, and that's what you're going to do. And that's what, unfortunately, the cops don't have the money, they don't have the ability to do it. They can't do it. So we have to. I talked to Eric about all this and said, I don't know what they can even do. And that's true. When it comes down to it, they did put a patrol in town. They helped out with any of these problems. I'm afraid we're gonna have to take care of myself. So maybe it's time when we get a constable at least releases this pattern. So one of us can call one of you guys and say, hey, get the Gould Hill Road because they're tearing it up. Get the Hawaii Road and they're tearing it up. You know, but that's you know, bottom line, these guys are responsible. If you, if you push them, you know, that's what it takes nowadays. I hate to say it's it sucks, but that's what it is. You gotta say something. You don't say something, they're gonna take care of it. Thanks, Bob. Kenny? All right. Just like that, that last season, um, maybe Spencer can clarify for me. I believe we had the Fish and Gaming Department on Cotton Hollow and Hoag Road four to five different occasions on yeah. Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and I've said in the club page for that. I know 
a lot of discussion about the enforcement, and we try. You know, I mean, we try to police our own. We pay for enforcement when we can get enforcement. We would absolutely, I guarantee you that VASA would pretty much pay for a constable if we could get a constable to perform this act. And no cost to the town because VASA has, I don't know, $200,000 budget for enforcement. They pay fish and game, uh, Franklin County Sheriff's, um, another sheriff's department up north or whatever, or lead sheriff's department. Uh, they would supply side by side for them to travel if they want to travel by side by side. But we can absolutely tell them where to go sit, where the problems are, and they can guarantee that solve a lot of the problems instantly, which fishing game has done for us. Um, I started to comment about Sinclair Road being closed. That road is open on the ordinance. So, um, clarification about us putting out to the public. It was on the only things we can do. We can put it out on Facebook on our group, three other clubs pages that border our area. Uh, Ryan put it out on the town site. Yeah, I, 20 seconds. I believe it was on front page forum. I don't know what else besides, I mean, if you want me to stand at the green over there and holler a couple hours, I could. But. Okay, anybody else? We're going to wrap it up and we have to We'll go to 35 after the hour and then we're going to cut it off. I'm just going to refer to this email from Matt Kinney, dated November 16, 2021, when he was a select board member. On a related note, I don't see the ambiguity in the ATV ordinance that you mentioned recently. ATVs are only legal on unpaved class three roads. The road in front of your house is clearly paved. And of course, they're not allowed on 100 seat except to cross in one spot. So. When they are going in front of my home, wait, Sinclair wait, 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 Road, address only the board. When they are going in front of my home on St. Clair Road, they are not in compliance. To be clear. Yep. Doug? There's a speed limit sign for ATV right in front of our house. Uh, Which he also okay. Said, okay, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 we're not doing this. That is the one and only warning. We're not doing this. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Neil. I appreciate the attempt uh, to police the, uh, for the BASA to police the um, leaders and, and so forth. And I think sometimes uh, it works and sometimes it doesn't. And if we could spend more money and time on that, that would be better. Um, one of the problems is that in opening more roads and trying to make trail connections, uh, and inviting more riders in. It's not just a Johnson crowd, not even a county crowd. It's going to be a, you know, a larger crowd. And I think it becomes harder and harder to enforce anything when you have more riders coming in. And that does seem to be the goal of BASA to, to you know, open it up to as many people as possible to have them come from out of state. I remember telling you that I, that Deb Markowitz, the last Secretary of State, Ten seconds. Was, said that we couldn't just limit it to Johnson residents. But I wouldn't mind if you check that with a new Secretary of State and see if that's so. In which case, at least keep it to a town or countywide riders. Thank you, Neil. OK. One more speaker, if anyone would like to speak. <clears throat> Seeing none. Okay. We're going to turn it over to board discussion. So, just a reminder for late attendees, um, we are going to have a board working session. So, residents of Johnson voted for select board members to represent you. And we're going to do our work and do our best. Um, it will not be perfect, and everyone will not be happy. So, full disclosure. Um, Brian, would you do me a favor and would you read off um, specifically some of the votes that have occurred that are in the packet, just to set a little context, and then also if you could share the key parts of the ordinance. That would be great. All right. So we'll get started with that. Anybody who wants the 
their own reading material. We've got a stack of packets printed up here at the front. It is huge. I think we killed a lot of those trees. As long as they don't roll the roads. <laughs> This is a listening point. Yes. This is a listening point. Yes. All right. I'm going to start on page 26, which sums up the all the votes we've had at town meetings, uh, and it is three times. The first time was, I guess, let's. First was a result of a petition raised to cause the reconsideration when the current ordinance was first adopted. So again, when an ordinance is adopted, uh, the voters of the town have the ability to raise a petition to cause the reconsideration of a proposed ordinance. That'll be an option if and when we change, make changes to the ordinance, and that was an op option when the ordinance was first adopted. And is that the ordinance we have in place right now? It is. So the ordinance we have in place right now, there was a petition was raised, it went to reconsideration. So at a town-wide meeting, there was a vote to uphold the current ordinance. Um, it was a voice vote. The number of votes on one side or the other was not recorded. So that's kind of lost the time, but it was enough that it won at that meeting without somebody questioning it enough to ask for a, a count. In 2020, uh, let's see, at the regular town meeting in 2020, during other business, I got cut off, uh, but at, during other business, at the end of the meeting, uh, that was the first suggestion about allowing ATVs into the downtown. Uh, at that meeting, it passed, again, by a voice vote. We didn't count the number of people who and participated in that meeting, but it was raised from the floor, a suggestion of allowing ATVs to enter the downtown. It passed by a voice vote, and that kind of, I think most of you are familiar with the discussion we've had since then about- We shouldn't assume. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the, the discussions we had since have been about uh, securing permission from the state to use Route 15 itself, because the town doesn't control Route 15, uh, and the town allowing uh, access to Gould Hill, the rest of Gould Hill, and uh, Railroad Street. Uh, those are paved Class 2 and Class 3 roads, uh, so they weren't allowed by the original ordinance. Um, can I just make one comment? That vote that was taken that was raised from the floor was a non-binding vote, correct? It was. Thank you. The last time it was ATVs were brought up at town meeting was in 2021, uh, which you recall was the meeting, uh, the first meeting that we did under the, the allowances that the state government allowed for uh, COVID-19. So that was by Australian ballot rather than in person. Uh, so the articles that we placed on that was Article 13, shall the select board repeal the ordinance regulating all train vehicles. That failed a vote of 307 in favor of repealing, 500, 538 against repealing. Then Article 14, shall the select board undertake a comprehensive evaluation of the environmental impacts of <coughs> ATV use on class four roads at Johnson. That failed by a vote of 390 in favor, 461 against. So besides those town-wide meetings, there have been a couple actions by the board. Before we go on, did yep. you have something here? Well, just also mention those two are non-binding. Those two are also non-binding. Yes. Okay, thanks, sir. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, the first one was a binding vote. The, the others, uh, the reconsideration was binding. All the others have been not binding. All right, so I'm jumping backwards to page 16. Page 16 is minutes from regular select board meeting uh, in April of 2019. Um, let's see, we had a uh, massive request. This is the, uh, this is covering the section of Route 100C that allows the trail connection between Rocky Road and Hoang Road. Uh, so it's, again, it's a state road. So the select board doesn't really have a role in it, but uh, the state was asking what the select board's opinion on this issue was. So uh, the local ATV writers brought that question to the select board and we weighed in. Uh, let's see, the motion that passed was to inform VTrans that the town will leave it up to VTrans to make a decision about the VAS request to use a portion of 100 C based on the safety of all vehicles on the road, including ATVs. So again, it's not our road. The select board at the time felt that it was not appropriate to have a particular position on, yep. uh, on the outcome. Next up, a uh, month later, 520, 2019 um, was the uh, page 18. Uh, that was the request for access to the uh, light industrial park, the Jewett property. In order for that, in order to reach that property, uh, it was also asked that we allow the, a, a paved part of Clay Hill Road between Plot Road, Plot Road and Blue Hill, and uh, the section of Blue Hill up to Dry uh, That motion was voted on and, and passed to allow Light Industrial Park and those two section, sections of paved road. Next. On page 21, excuse me, on page 20. Uh, BAF asked for an ATV policy, uh, a waiver of the ATV policy for trail maintenance. So, no, that's fast. So oh, yeah, uh, BAF was needed to use ATVs to access parts of their trail network. Uh, in order to conduct summer maintenance on their winter snowmobile trips. That was also voted on and approved. Then we've got March 16th of 2020. Uh, the ATV group, this is a discussion about, let's see. This was the, uh, at this time, we suspended discussion about uh, the expansion because we needed a little bit more, a uh, little bit more to work on that first meeting that we brought it up. But at that meeting, we did reapprove the annual authorization for use of the light industrial park property. Then page 22. Um, this was the discussion and vote that allowed uh, ATV use on Railroad Street and uh, the, the remainder of Gould Hill that had been previously granted. That also passed. That brings us up to date on all of the votes. <coughs> by the select board or by uh, membership that have happened uh, since the ATV ordinance was adopted. Um, except that last meeting, sorry, I don't know the date of this new board. Yes. 
Uh, on discussion of some of the particulars and rereading, a close reading of our existing ordinance, uh, we became concerned that our existing ordinance specifically refers to uh, unpaved class three and class four roads. Um, there are some considerations, but it, it's pretty clear about its intent, that it, it intends to be unpaved class three and class four roads. The select board at our last meeting did vote to uphold a that interpretation of the ordinance as passed. That brings us to current. Thank you. Okay, board. Ryan sent a um, template that we could use, that we could adopt if we wanted to adopt a new template um, to move away from the old template. Um, it could mean that we work for changing content in the old template. It could mean we don't, and we simply transfer content and intent over into a new format. Um, and that's what we're here to talk about. Um, there's a number of other artifacts in the packet to help inform us during the discussions, um, including some content provided around trail systems. Thank you, Ken, for your help with that. Um, as well as um, state statute, um, other towns surrounding town ordinances uh, for reference. So, question for the board is where do we want to start in our discussions? I think uh, there's certainly. The current ordinance is recognized issues with it. Yep. I think that's well known. Um, I think procedurally, what we should do is amend the current wording, and it may be a wholesale amendment, just basically the whole thing, but amend what we currently have from, from for an ordinance to something that maybe reflects something closer to what the uh, the latest model ordinances that's provided by the league. And I think that uh, we might also want to get away from other attachments in the ordinance, keep the ordinance pretty strict to what we want to accomplish, you know, whether it's opening certain roads or not opening other roads and not get into the uh, registering uh, licenses and uh, you know uh, all of those kind of things that we had sort of approached in the original ordinance and, and where i'm coming from with this is when we have a speed limit ordinance we address what we want for a speed limit we don't say you have to have a registered vehicle you don't have to have a license to drive it you know we let the state laws uh, handle all of that, and that way we wouldn't have to uh, change our ordinance every time a state law was to be modified. Well, that, that's sort of my thoughts of the direction that we should go. Talking to me, um, I, I agree with. <laughs> we don't want to. Let's not venture into state law. Let's let's make our ordinance specific to Johnson. If we try and venture into state law, we're just gonna. Um, like Eric said, we're going to open up a can of worms and we're dependent on the state to create these laws and to some extent enforce them. You know, people have to be licensed and registered and insured. I don't want us to be, as a town, to be good. Those are fair requests. I agree. It would be an amendment not a repeal in any way and even the amendment could be voted on and if it got voted down or repealed we would end with exactly what we have now the problem is the previous board illegally accidentally illegally gave permission for gold hill and railroad street which in our last meeting we took back 
uh, took the at, toad prize. At the advice of our lawyer, yes. Yep. That is true. Mm -hmm. It would be nice. Uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of comments from other citizens about start and end times. Um, maybe we define something like that there. But we just leave it to the state. As I understand peace and quiet, um, and I also have talked to some of our town crew. There's been people out on ATVs playing around on the roads, and I don't have a problem with it, but if they get hurt because we're trying to clear the roads for the rest of our citizens, I don't see a problem with saying that they don't need to be out there in December. Ben, the we... last part of what you said, Evan. During winter months, essentially. Oh. Um, Kind of defining it so that things are safer <clears throat> for our do we have a season you you i'm new you, do we have a season nasa yeah. nasa hey, has it? like a registration when it runs out but if you there is no current season right now are you recommending that we say i mean i know there's seasons for other things <laughs> i'm recommending a discussion about it yeah Possibly. Maybe um, keep out of the mud. That might be a good way way. for both people to win or ATV people get trails and roads and people that are against the noise have uh, you know <coughs> so they have period. Hours of day, but you're talking about seasons of year, right? Also. A conversation about it. Yeah. Okay, so so far, here's what I have. So far I have talk about using the league. Um, template so that we can fix wording issues. Talk about um, and be and be strict to our intent without considering clubs, licensing, registrations, etc. So that the state law drives that regulation. Um, perhaps defining hours of operation. That's defined. Time of year is not defined. Okay, so you're not talking about modifying hours. I don't see a problem with the hours that are there. Okay. Now. Well, I just want to. Uh, I was just, just confirm it's okay. Time okay, so it's the season of year to protect roads and other. Which is already resources. there for snowmobiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. They need yeah. snow, <laughs> so it's a little different. Okay. No, uh, bass or snowmobiling is very strict. You know, certain dates, and I don't know their dates, like December fifteenth yeah. or whatever, April first. They close them. Uh, I'm not sure if if ATVs have a similar. So there is a state requirement. So that's where maybe we shouldn't be getting into that because if there's a state requirement already, and that might change. That. I don't think there is a state. There's no state requirement. There's no state requirement. Oh. It's a club. It's a club season. It's actually in our documentation. It's in our, it's a club season, and I think that's a that's different if a club has a season. For recreation purposes and the town having a season to protect our assets essentially um and that's what i think i'm hearing unfortunately from. if they use the more in mud season we'd be protecting our assets <laughs> i'm serious okay. one, one of the concerns i had is it was raised several times and i always thought it was an issue um and that's that is enforcement um, I think Ken mentioned that there is a section of the statute that, and the statute itself talks about 85% of the funds generated from this section, which I assume means registrations and fines, um, but I, I don't know that for sure. But, but anyway, 85% um, of the funds uh, generated can go to Forest Parks and Recreation and to VASA for trail maintenance. Um, uh, law enforcement is one of those things. Um, so I, I'd like to see us candidly put a little pressure on um, law enforcement. Um, you know, as I understand it, there are other sheriff's departments that do. We've, we've approached my. Uh, wait, this, sorry. The, the, the do that. Um, and, you know, I think it's a legitimate question. Um, you know, I think people should have the ability to call somebody. And, and, uh, 
you know, make, make, if we've got an ordinance, we ought to have some mechanism of enforcing it. If we don't have any mechanism of enforcing it, we shouldn't have an ordinance. So, you know, that's, that's one of my concerns. Um, and I think that bears some further investigation. I don't know how that plays into redrafting or writing an ordinance, but I think it's a legitimate issue. Um, another thing I'd really like to see, and again, I don't think this is an ordinance issue, but I wonder if there is some way to work with the most affected property owners um, to perhaps build some trails, you know, that would go around those, you know, those most affected people. Um, and, you know, maybe those affected people could work with the VASA group. The VASA group could work with those people. Um, there's got to be some accommodation that could be made to address the legitimate concerns of the VASA group and of the people that are most affected. And that's, How does that impact the ordinance? I don't think it does, but, but I think it's an issue that I've been thinking about a lot is how can we, you know, how can we encourage you folks out there to, as Bob said, police, you know, come up with your own solutions in some, in some respects. And, you know, maybe, maybe there's some, maybe there's some room there. I don't know what it is. Um, it's just, it's just a thought I've had that it seems to me that both parties have legitimate issues. ATVs, UTVs are here. You know, they're they're not going away. Um, the legitimate concerns about people who are affected by them are also not going away. You know, they they have legitimate concerns too. Is there some way that we can uh, facilitate the process of uh, you know getting parties together to deal with those you know problem issues? That's what I'd like to see. And again, I don't think it has, I don't think we can legislate that. You know, I don't think we can do an ordinance that says that that has to happen somehow. But. Yep. Okay. Okay. So ordinance related, I hear you and agree with you, by the way, on all of your talk about the community getting together and solving for. Uh, and I would certainly encourage whoever wants to have those discussions to go for it. Um, but in terms of the board and policy, I think that's where we need to focus our attention at the moment. Uh, and some things we can do and can control and others we can't. Um, so that being said, um, to the point about enforcement and having an ordinance without enforcement, what are others thoughts on that? You know, the, the state has really stepped up with the snowmobiling enforcement. They have, I believe it's game wardens, maybe it's state police, but they have them out there. They provided snowmobiles. They're doing the enforcement. I really think the state should be, there's revenue that comes in from, from registering all of these uh, ATVs, just like snowmobiles. The state's the one that gets the revenue. We do not. They're the ones that should be stepping up and enforcing ATV regulations, just like they do some of it. And maybe that's where our legislators need to uh, push a little bit. That's my thought. Interesting angle. Have you had discussions with any of our reps on that? No, I never had. Since Ken is here, can I pose a question to him about that? Because sure. you mentioned, so Ken, you mentioned the, uh, that you had fish and wildlife come a couple times. Yep. Uh, do you think there's any ability for them to expand their enforcement? Uh, just to add quickly, you know, they do do a lot for patrolling bass, some state troopers, um, but they're at their down season because most hunt is over. Our season starts when the busy season of all the fishing season. So it's harder to get them. Uh, we worked with two wardens individually. And of course, they did build a vast for us, but <laughs> they individually to get them in certain areas where we knew we had problems. And their general routine is like Cotton Hall. They sit on the Johnson Waterville side of it and the top side because there's no escape. They do the same thing on Hoag Road and Sinclair Road, uh, Cooper Hill, other towns, stuff like that. That's, how, that's the best way we can get them to control. Um, they gave a lot of fines last year in other towns, not Johnson, because everybody was actually pretty good. Uh, ASA has a lot of money for patrol. 
we're, we're willing to help. We just can't get anybody to do it. No, we can get comfortable to do stuff. They absolutely would pay the wage more than he's going to be making when you guys pay for time. You know, so it's it's there to help. We just we can't do it ourselves. I've tried, Eric. I think Eric would attest. I've done an outstanding job the last couple of years trying to solve problems with my hands tied. Because we've broke the Boyle County Sheriff several times. We will pay whatever they ask. You know, it's, we don't need them on the ATV. All they get to do is just have time just driving around. Just like when we sit over here this evening when we all pulled in here, he said, the Sheriff's Department, everybody's well down. So Ken, that's an important point about the Sheriff's Department. And I think we all feel that no matter what our position is in all of this. Um, BJ, as constable, since your name was brought up, do you have? Actually, it's kind of funny because a couple of days ago, I actually emailed Brian. I was talking to another constable in another town and uh, he take courses at the academy um, that give us the right to enforce tickets for vehicles, ATVs, motorcycles, or anything like that in town. Um, so me and Brian haven't talked about it yet. I just sent the email what, two days ago, one day ago from my dad. So uh, this is all kind of new, but that is something that we can absolutely do and we can absolutely get a training for it. Okay. One problem. I think I add one more thing real quick. The, the town of Johnson in the past has restricted the ability of constables to perform law enforcement services. So if if that becomes an approach that we talk about, it would require a townwide vote to reinstate the authority of constables to perform law enforcement services. Uh, we as a board may be able to expand or restrict their duties. I think we were given that in the voters' authority. Okay, we'll take that as an but, action item yeah, to follow it's up. Yeah, offline discussion. Something we can follow up on. Uh, yeah. Something you did in the past. Well, the voters, the voters authorized did. many years ago having constables appointed versus elected. And that mm -hmm. way we could determine what their duties were. I thought they specifically voted to rescind or restrict law enforcement. I think we should Do table this and do some research on it. I don't think we're going to resolve it tonight, yeah. and I have an action on it, so we'll we'll follow up on it. Um, and Brian, if you could add that to your list, I, I'm going to ask you to delegate to Lydia. Uh, okay, cool. I, I think there is a good discussion around enforcement that we. That we as the board with VASA have got to dig into because this rem this reminds me of when snowmobiles came in the seventies. It was just the wild west, you know. And then VAST came; they got the trail system worked out, and like Duncan's idea, maybe they places that they can avoid, you know, with a, with off road trails or something. But, um, I think that's a good point, Mark. Um, does anyone from the board have an interest in creating a small group? to explore and and by creating a small group i actually mean creating a small group with board member representation and probably uh others too we need to have some stakeholders in this Let's to dig more. into uh enforcement very specifically around atvs i have did, did i understand you say a specific issue of, of looking this at specific issue of looking at enforcement okay. <clears throat> Are you thinking about it? I, I'm supportive of the concept, but I'm not <laughs> volunteering. <laughs> if that's what you're asking. All right. Um, so, board members, I have a request of all of you is to seriously consider somebody who would be willing to dig in. Um, and then, if anyone listening to this is interested in it, please reach out to me and I'll put a can, can we wait until we hear back from Brian on constables? Sure. Yep. I was thinking that answer would be important for that group too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I hear interest. So absolutely, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Enforcement. We're going to table that one. Got it. Um, 
Do we want to look at the league ordinance wording and see if we have specific concerns about that? What page is that at? The I think it's the very last. Yeah, Marla. 52. 53. Brian, can you turn those packets? Yeah. I need three. Yeah. So are, are, are we looking at that as a, as a as a possible Beth, is that? Yeah, I think we should just look at it and talk about whether or not we want to adopt something like this or not. One thing that strikes me right away about looking at that ordinance under the, under the um, penalty provisions, mm -hmm. there's nothing in there with regard to ATV use on roads that are not open under the ordinance. Thus, there's no penalty. Thus, there's no penalty. Right. It seems to me that if, if, if well, it, it really depends on what roads, uh, you know, get included as being open to use. Uh, if, if we open all roads, then I guess there's no issue. Um, but if we do restrict the roads that are open to ATV use, it would seem to me that we would need a penalty for operation on roads that were not open. Okay. At least in this model, they're not even identifying highway classes. It's just any town highway open must be posted. So if we had even class one highways, does that mean we could open them? We don't have any class class. Class. No, but I said even yeah. if we did. Yeah. So I wonder if that's why like some of our surrounding towns list all of the roads that are open to ATV usage. I have noticed in the past. But the problem with that is we're gonna change the rules, then you'd have to change your whole ordinance and go through the whole process. It, it's better to have it uh, identify, I think, a class of highways that we will open and then it wouldn't have required changes every year with the ordinance if we change the trail system or open highways. And I, while I I don't see a problem with opening, obviously, class four, but class three paved and unpaved. But I would, on class two, I'd want to have a little bit more restrictive where maybe uh, for connecting trail systems, a class two would be available, for example, like Railroad Street. But I wouldn't want to see ATVs going back and forth on Hogback. It's a 50 mile an hour highway. Um, I wouldn't want to see that kind of class two opened up. So right now, I just want to make sure that um, I hear you, Eric. That's the first thing I want to say. I understand what you're saying. Um, right now, our ordinance does not allow, allow for paved class three roads. Right. Um, and you're suggesting you want to. See See us talking about that? Yeah, that would take care of the access to the uh, down uh, Gould Hill to uh, over a little section of Clay Hill to Gould to uh, uh, Jollies. That section of Clay Hill, class two. And that's class two. And that's yeah, where, that's again, we'd, we'd want to have that ability on certain sections of class two that could be open. All of Thought Road is class two, also. And all of Plot Road, but it's not, most yeah. of it's not paid. It's not paid, but it's class too. Yeah. yeah. So, so if we're going to talk about changing content like that. I don't know. I mean, what was your question, Mark? Are you, I'm wondering if you're thinking about opening up all class two roads. No, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't like to see like Hogback, which is a paid 50 mile an hour right, class uh, two. Clay Hill down to the village. But, Getting access 
into the village with Railroad Street or Clay Hill, I can see where we would hope and lose that. So basically what you're thinking is we're gonna pick the roads, not Hogback, but Clay Hill, not Sinclair, but other, right. we're just pick well, our way around. I, I'd rather see us not picking. I know, that's what because, I'm thinking, but you're, but you're headed, you say that, but then I get the sense that you're but, picking. Well, you could do paved class two highways, not exceeding a speed limit of X miles an hour. Awesome. Way to do it. Yeah. Um, that somewhat ties to our speed limit ordinance, but you know, if we said no paved class two highways in excess of 40 miles an hour speed limit zones, that would take care. I could see hogback being dangerous. Yeah. Some point, I can't even believe the study in the state came back to 50 miles an hour. So that's a different conversation. That would be a way to not name class two highways. So we jumped from talking about structure of the, the thing to actual content changes. And I'm hoping we can go back to content of the model policy before getting into discussion about specific roads further. But the reason I brought that up is, is the content because in the model, they really don't even uh, Right. Spell out any. So in the model, like in page, uh, on page 54, it talks about open town highways to ATVs. That's essentially the section that we would need to specify, I believe. The second the section. Section. Yeah, I think that is the section I would imagine we would expand upon if we were going to get specific, right? Yeah. Well, even to model what we have right now, we can do expand that. In terms of the content, um, I understand and appreciate Eric's comment with regard to not wanting to get into the weeds um, on spelling out what requirements we're going to have. But I, I think that at a minimum, any ordinance should have reference to the state statutory requirements for registration, insurance, et cetera. And if we, if we refer to the state statute, we don't necessarily have to change our ordinance anytime the statute changes. You know, so there think, is reference we on just that have a first in the introduction. That's great. Reference items um, on which the model ordinance, yeah, in, model ordinance and introduction. Where the it's a website, probably. page 53 in the packet. The very uh, first, oh, but that's not part, that of, the model be part of the ordinance that we adopted. But on page 57 is where the ordinance itself begins. Uh, 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 yeah, the, and the ordinance itself underneath authority, not. it does say, yeah. uh, it does reference the parts of the state statute. We probably could expand on that if we wanted to, uh, to say that, you know, the state, our ordinance applies in this capacity for, for these parts and state law applies for licensing, the board, uh, licensing uh, insurance, and et cetera. When I read that section, Brian, I, I think that is, more related to the authority to adopt an ordinance under Title 24 and, and um, Title 23 specifically refers to the fact that the town can adopt an ordinance to enforce the provisions. Um, well, 23 VSA 3501, in theory, could be added to the other references here, right? Yeah, and, and that's yeah. kind of more what I was getting at. It's not that this this might not sufficiently cover what you're asking for, Duncan, but this might be a good place to insert that language that yeah. we cover this part and state law applies for the other part. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just, I just think somewhere we ought to have some mention of the statutory requirements, you know, as an enforceable item in our, in our ordinance. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I guess I agree with Duncan. I don't think it's critical, but I mean, it's the state law super seats everything we're doing. It's actually listed in section 3D about definitions. It, I don't think it's very explicit anywhere that that state law about licensing and insurance applies, but it, it kind of has to apply to state law. Right. Yeah. So yeah. ignorance of the law. So it's incorporated yeah. by reference. You, I think you're right. Beth. It's incorporated by reference. It looks like in section four with their recommended ordinance that you would identify specific highways actually. Yeah, and sections, yeah. So what Eric's referring to is it says, um, if highways will be open to ATV travel, insert the following language. The following town highways shall be open to ATV traffic. Insert name of town highway, whether they are open in entirety or only designated sections. Example, Main Street from the intersection of Elm eastward to the intersection of Maple. Means if you ever wanted to change it, you gotta do it. But that's, more that's, that's where the structure that we talked about the hat. You could just write class four town line. Right. Yeah. Where, we're, where we'll get into deeper discussion is class two, class two paved. Right. That, I think class know, three probably, two. Or, yeah. Okay. So yeah, probably, we don't have that yet. Probably we can do class four. That's easy. And class that's easy. three. We also right now we have in our existing ordinance, Mark, we have class four and class three on that. One thing I actually do like about the current ordinance, which could be expanded on a little bit to address one of the issues that you just mentioned, Eric, is the current ordinance says the select board may list specific unpaved class three and class four roads where ATVs may be opened or not operated by an annual posting and public notice of roads open to ATV as per use as per this ordinance. So that's giving the board some flexibility to annually review that list. And you know, that list could be expanded to, you know, I kind of like the idea of that's a having a trail network system. Um, and if that involves unpaved class three and class two byways, I think we should at least consider that um, in that sort of annual revisiting could give the board some flexibility in that regard. So we don't get into the situation we got into by accidentally illegally or um, opening roads that should have been open according to the ordinance. Does that mean you'd be required to annually post? It sounds like you would. I'm sorry. What? You'd be required to annually post? Well, the, the language in here is that it may. Where are you seeing this? Major Which is permissive. Right? It's under no. um, C, uh, section four, operation of ATVC. No. Which no. page is it? Oh. It's under our existing. Uh, thank you. Sorry. What page? 14, uh, page 14 of the packet. Oh. The paper, man, I hate paper. Okay, say that again, section 4B. Uh, section 4C, the last sentence.
And that last sentence is um, ask for town highways as a town highway map. The select board may list specific unpaid class three and four roads where ATVs may be operated or not operated by an annual listing of public notice of roads. Okay. So I that, like that. that wording is pretty specific. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that wouldn't, that as written, it wouldn't allow. And in fact, that's probably the basis of a legal opinion is that the ordinance is specifically saying you can't right. open anything that's not an unpaved class three or, or class two. I mean, a paid. Oh, yeah, a paid. A paid class three. But or, if or we had two. expanded that language a little bit for the classes, this, the rest of this language uh, where it may list specific paid or unpaid class three, class two, class four roads, that would capture everything where we could open, we might have to uh, post it, but we could open up certain highways or close certain highways every year and not require a full ordinance change. That, that was my thought. Process. Yeah, yeah. That's where you guys made the mistake with that clause right there. Yes, right. one of the mistakes. It wasn't free. <laughs> uh, I would like to get an opinion about using a road posting like that. That doesn't. That's not really in line with the recommendation that they provided. So I'd like to bring that up to you know the league about. Is, would that be allowed? Using that language. Yeah, using the language of, you know, we're going to provide manual posting. Mm -hmm. And so our ordinance would say the roads allowed are the roads listed on the annual posting. Does that work or not? So Brian's going to check with the league on huh? annual posting. And that doesn't specifically. No, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm perfectly um, fine with that. Um, no, from my only the only caveat that I would have is that in my experience, the municipal assistance attorneys tend to be pretty conservative in how they interpret things. And since if we ended up in a situation where the ordinance was in question, we would be relying on our municipal attorney for legal advice. I'm wondering if it makes more sense to go directly to our attorney. Our attorneys. Attorneys. Well, before we adopted an ordinance, it would go to our attorney. So I don't exactly. Know. So it probably is. I don't know if it would so need to it be. It might be premature because yeah. we're going to have a lot of changes, additions, modifications to this model. Yeah. Well, I don't think it hurts to get an idea. I mean, Brian's suggestion is a good one in terms of, you know, the Mac attorneys could certainly offer a quick. Put we have a dirty opinion at the end of the day. Evan's right, you know, any ordinance that we adopt should be reviewed by the municipal attorney because they would be the ones that ultimately would have to support. Right. So, so Ben, yep. annual posting and public notice. Does that mean sign beside the road, like no truck over 40,000 pounds, which would mean sign beside the road by our road through ATVs allowed here? I'm just, you guys know this, I don't know when. Or as annual posting, we put something on front porch form, but that's public notice. So annual posting means- Yeah, something think it different than public notice, right? Sign, sign beside the road, which oh, to me sounds like a pain in the rear for the road crew to go out. Yeah, I don't envision it as being bad. I envision it as being a, a listing of all roads in providing public notice that the select board has made that listing, um, which would give the public an opportunity to comment on, you know, those roads. Okay. So we so we should define that posting or something. Yeah, it should be, should be public notice or public posting, but not. I I have this envision of. Yeah, that language might be a public list. Yeah, in, yeah. and public in, notification. Yeah. Public notification. 
Um, I think we should add whatever we whatever we end up settling on. We should probably make sure, and I will do this. I'm kind of anal about this kind of stuff, but we need to make sure that the definitions are. I like definitions and contracts. <laughs> and with, I think that to that point, we should put, think, if we're using terms like postings, we should put that in the definition of what we mean. You would make a good state representative. No, I would not. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate the comment. This is a punishment enough. <laughs> I know, the comment I did say, not compliment. <laughs> it's all the definitions. It really is. It is, yes. I find myself wondering, listening to you guys, if it's an annual posting, does that mean? That it could not be changed during the year, or would you want to give yourself the ability to amend the list during the year? Good question. Mm. Yeah. Is it annual on, on starting yeah. with the date? I think that the if, ordinance? well, if we're talking about an ordinance, I think we need to be really careful about what that means because an ordinance has due process assigned to it. And if we're changing the content of a posting, aren't we changing the content of an ordinance if we change that listing in any way? Not a part of the ordinance if we, is that you can <laughs> change. Right. You write into the ordinance that you can change the, the content. And I think that, that could be the point that Brian's um, concerned about is, is that a legitimate exercise of an ordinance? I don't know the answer. We did it before, and that was reviewed. <laughs> that was reviewed by the town attorney at the time. <laughs> Opinions change over the course of time. Um, yeah, give ourselves carte blanche power. Write it, on, <laughs> write it on paper, and we have it. We should go to Washington D.C. with this mentality. <laughs> um, Ken, I apologize, but I don't want to take public comment because then I have to open it up. I was just going to give you the second. We did just take public. I didn't know if she had some big question. On the it was a good question, but it was public. Yeah, no, it, was. Was <laughs> it was a little cheating. It was a little cheating. We'll let you abuse your power that time. Okay. Um, so, focusing back, um, we've talked about that, covered that. We don't need to do that anymore. I'm just going to strike that. Um, we talked about expanding definitions as needed, <laughs> my favorite one. And we talked about whether or not um, building out section four to include current language from their existing ordinance about um, C2, which is our existing, which uh, section four C2, which is the class four town highways identified, blah, 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 with the select board may provide a list essentially. Um, and whether or not that is suitable, we just talked about that. I feel like we should get clarification on that. I'm not super comfortable with allowing us to change a list personally, but uh, we should probably get clarification. Um, also on page 58 of the packet, um, in section six, it talks about time of operation and Evan brought up season earlier. Um, so expanding out season very specifically. I think that's, I mean, I think that's gotta be a given season. I mean, because some of these trails are running over vast trails. You know, so there's this vast has a season. Clearly you don't want ATVs running. It's, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, at the same time snowmobiles are running. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Do you know the answer to that? I, I would suggest that we work with perhaps Ken and Bassa on defining what would be a reasonable uh, seasonal limitation. Yep, that sounds perfect. And just for reference, Ken has told the board this many times. <laughs> just like I just like to point out. Um, and it's in our minutes in this packet, actually, in some of those minutes that are in the packet, it talks about the season. Just saw it when I was doing something here. Um, but yeah, that sounds good. So we'll plug that in. Uh, we talked about the enforcement group, like maybe having a small group to talk about um, how to make enforcement happen. Eric dipped his toe into maybe being interested. <laughs> 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 like to say publicly. <laughs> 
Uh, there's too much time with his retirement. Mm -hmm. And what else? Those are the notes I have so far and what we have in front of us. Did you get the um, penalties as Duncan had talked about? For, for defining penalties for Page 58, yeah. that are non open. Yes, thank you. I just, I did not write that down. You covered everything pretty quick. Yes. That's something within our power to actually set fine penalties. Yes, uh, on our ordinances, I think there might be a couple Limited. state statutes that give us some kind of guide rails to stay with it. But Yeah, I think the state statute prescribes an upper limit, at least, of what the civil penalty could be. We'd be having forfeiture. <laughs> our, our current... Our current fine structure is um, it's right here. It's on, actually, it's yeah. on page 59 of the, on 59, section 9C, it talks about enforcement officers authorized to recover civil penalty, penalties for the following violations as set by the state of Vermont. Operation along a highway that has not been open for use by the select board. Mm -hmm. Operation within a public cemetery and operation on a sidewalk that has not been open for travel by the select board. Fair enough. That answers your question. Does it say what the penalty is actually? No. Nope. Yeah, have to that's what I thought. Yep. But we'd said it before. Because this is our current ordinance. Yeah. We did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, something that we want to probably be sensitive to is. Uh, time of operations, day, time, night, time, uh, opening and closing season, uh, the fines, where appropriate, we should probably try to be consistent with neighboring towns so that if there is an enforcement of a state level, they're not having to lug around a whole stack of different ordinances and having different fine structures for different towns and yeah. uh, different hours of operation would save confusion if it's, it's uh, you know consistent. So we must want Brian to find out what other towns are for not so much uh, you have requested me to find out what other towns have uh, I've been able to get a couple of them Love the our neighbors ordinances yeah, that are included in the packet, and I've got requests out to the others. Quite a few don't have them for this. Okay. Um, and someone used our ordinance as a model. That probably only becomes a real issue if it would become a bigger issue if we had a single entity that was enforcing everybody's rules and regulations. Yeah. We don't. It'd be nice if they were the same within the county. It would be. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that the sh that's the one thing that Roger always told us is that he would he would appreciate it if our ordinances were similar. <laughs> it just made it easier for his, his officers. But so sorry. on the point of that, we don't have. If we look at the trails that are included, we don't have. Okay, I shouldn't say this as concretely as I'm about to say it. I'm not sure, I believe, I know we connect to Hyde Park and I know we connect to Eden. And I feel like we connect to Waterville. Good job on my homework. Okay. Uh, so those are the most important that we would be alike because they would be in surrounding towns. And if we take that a step further, um, the towns that we contract Sheriff's Department services for with a uh, shared well, a similar contract, not the same contract, uh, are Hyde Park and Wilco. So given all of that, it seems like it's most important that we are in align with, alignment with Hyde Park. For what that's worth. Or they're in alignment with us. Or they're in, well, or they're in alignment with us, yes. But I don't think they have <laughs> ATPs on their anticipated agendas. At least not that, I, not that I've heard of. I have asked. <laughs> um, the, and we have a copy of Hyde Park's um, ordinance here. 
one on page on page 47 and 48 of our packet. So for what that's worth. And that, that is pretty, it looks like they actually used the model. It's pretty close. It's not exactly, but it's pretty close to the model. It looks like they deleted a bunch of stuff, but. Uh, sorry to bring us back to something, but uh, when we're talking about penalties, my reading of uh, Section 9C in the Model Ordinance, I believe that those three violations are violations of state statute that the state. What page, Brian? Uh, 59. Okay. Of the model ordinance, yes. Uh, which is the enforcement officer is authorized to recover civil penalties for the following violations uh, is as set by the state of Vermont. So they'd have their own fine. They do have their own fines in. Subsection 3506. Uh, 3506. B13, which is on page 8. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's start to talk about it. It's finished on page uh, 3507. Sorry, 3507 on page 10. Yeah, $300 for each offense, unless otherwise. Yeah. So I think that. That part of C is us claiming that we're going to what would be us claiming to enforce those violations of state statute. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know that we could change that penalty if right like something like operation within a public cemetery is a violation of state law, not local ordinance. Okay. And then if they change the fine, we don't have to change our ordinance. Right. Yeah. Yeah, get those three violations are violations of state law. Yeah. I'm with you. Yep. We can't rewrite state law. Yep. Yeah. No. Good. That's it. I just wanted to clear that up. That's easy enough. Um, it's interesting because looking at high charts, they talk about just penalties generally, which is on page 48 of the packet. They just talk about penalties generally. They don't reference state at all, um, but that's beside the point. Um, I think they I copied do, our ordinance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do like that. I, I do like that it doesn't broken out differently for each offense. Like that's kind of just a lot. And is it necessary? You're you're comparing to this model I'm one. Comparing it to the model. Yeah, on I, page six. I don't like that either. You don't like the model one. Yeah. Yeah. The say that again. Get the, I don't like that the model breaks out these offense fees for, for each category. different violation. I just like that you violated and you have a flat fee. Whatever. So you don't is. like a first, second, and third offense. I mean, no, if you offend, you offend. Just keep filling them. I mean, I guess it doesn't, I don't mind the stacking it. I don't mind first, second, and third. What I do mind is I don't want a different fee structure, like failure to operate a single line, failure to uh, engaging in oh, racing. So it should all be the same. Just, yeah, get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Just have a first defense, That's second one. defense, third defense. Yes. Well, and you know, our, our current ordinance and the Hyde Park ordinance just lists offenses of the ordinance. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I'm agreeing. Well, 
was like general aid folks. Sorry. An alignment there. Okay. okay. So let's just go start from the top. Authority purpose definitions. Highways open. Speed limit and traffic, traffic control devices. You stop me if you want to talk about any of these things. Time of operation, we talk about in surveying season. Single file racing. Operation on public property and cemeteries. Penalties. I'm going to pause there because so we just last talk. Everyone is good with keeping those categories as are in the model ordinance. That's consistent with our current version. I'm not specifying what's in the town highways. I'm just saying it as a category. I think we should spend more time on that. I think we should, so I'm not talk to Kevin. I think we should spend more time talking about the town highways specifics. Um, but let's circle back to that and just get through ordinance review at a high level and then circle back to talking about specifics. I agree. Okay. Thanks. Um, I think we're going to spend a little bit more time on section five in the future. Uh, the speed limit controls and traffic control devices. Yep. What specifically about it, right? Uh, we've received some pretty good assistance from the club themselves in terms of putting up signs, changing signs, and things like that. It, it's been helpful that you know, we can call the club and, and let them know that we've received a couple of complaints. They'll go out, put down, you know, sensitive area signs, lower the speed limit if we need to. Uh, I think we we got to be careful with that. We do. I, I don't know exactly how to write it. We can't just say, you know, the club sign a sign like the club is going to take care of all of our signs for us, and they get to set speed limits or or anything else. But uh, sign, working on it so that there's some acknowledgement of cooperation between the town and the club. I guess one of the concerns I have is, you know, anytime we set up speed limit for the ATVs, it's slow. Yeah. You know, go down 10 miles an hour, what have you. The concern I would get into is like, if we were to set a speed limit much slower on Main Street than what the flow of the traffic is, are we making it an unsafe situation? Because they really should be going the flow of the traffic. Yeah. Unless there's some reason we wanted to slow them down, but I, I think we need to be careful with that. But that, that would bump up the speed limit on class three dirt roads. It would, but of course on class three dirt roads is typically not a lot of traffic. But you know, car traffic. Oh uh, yeah. No, but I but I mean, see if, the these, point I'm if, the, if the ATVs are going 25 miles an hour, hopefully there's not a huge backup of cars behind them. People getting or somebody running people, over them. Yeah, running over them, going too fast. But the, that would be a concern on on uh, you know, Route 15, for example, Main Street here. If they're going through Main Street and they're going much slower than the speed limit, and they, you know, semis are coming down the road. No, I understand. I, did, I, know, I just I think we've got to be careful with it. I don't think we have the authority to set a speed limit. No, we probably wouldn't, but but on some of our other highways as well. I, I just. I think we need to be sensitive to it. So um, I agree with you, Eric. I think there's safety implications of everything. The question I have is, and while I very much appreciate the work that goes into maintaining these things, I know it takes work and I appreciate that. But is the, time, is the town putting ourselves at risk or liability if we are delegating that responsibility to someone else, whoever. I don't, I don't think we legally can. We can't tell, I mean, then they could raise it too. They could make it 85 somewhere. I mean, and I don't mean like setting the limit. I mean, posting signs even. Like, oh, okay. We should probably be doing it. I think we should be doing it. I think we have the cover, the insurance coverage to do things like that. Um, and it's not that other places don't have coverage. It's just that it really probably should be a town responsibility. We could, I, 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 I think I agree with you. Uh, 
I like the fact that the club has put up some signs, sensitive areas, and you know, 15 miles an hour speed limit, that kind of thing. Um, uh, could we give them a blanket permit under right of way to um, place? Essentially, what they're doing is placing a sign within the highway right of way. Okay. Um, could we give them a permit on an annual basis or whatever to place additional signage within the highway right of way to you know for such things as sensitive areas or something yeah, like that? I hear what you're saying. I, the thing that just is going through my mind as you're talking, and I don't know the answer, so I'm not gonna pretend to. But the thing that's just going through my mind is it still is a liability factor, and I feel like if we contracted out with somebody, a club, a person, whatever, an organization, an entity, um, to do that work. I feel like that's slightly, that's different enough because then it's transferring that liability to them in which the town is still accountable and they're accountable to the town, but it's not the same thing as giving them a permit to put up signage that is about safety and regulation. So you would be more comfortable if the club were to continue to do it, paying them? I'm not saying, contracting doesn't mean you pay, first of all. And I'm not talking about the fun part of it. I'm just talking about the liability part of it. Understood. The risk and management. When there's transfer of money, there's transfer of liability through sure. contracts and yada, yada, yada. Sure. There's, there's, there's liability right now. I mean, I sort of think that what's happening right now is less liable for all of us because their signs are suggested. They're not the law. I mean, the sensitive area, the 15th, that's just a suggestion. We may be liable to the extent that we're turning the blind eye and allowing the signs in our right away. But we have speed limits here. In our I, I understand that, but there's there's a sensitive area 15 miles an hour is just a suggestion that they're doing, which is appreciated, I think, by everybody there. Yeah. Which suggests that it's not enforceable. It's certainly not enforceable, but do we want to even get into making the, us owning the signs, us or the standardized signs? I'm, I'm a little more like, I think keeping it right the way it is and turning a little blind eyes, this microphone will let me. <laughs> yeah, I can't too, but you know what I mean. If you start talking about liability, Beth, we can go down this a long, long ways. I don't think that in my short term coming to every meeting, I believe there was only one time when they wanted to remove a sign that was town owned. They didn't because they didn't get permission from the board. <laughs> We can go down the liability thing and stuff in a right away, but we're going to have a lot of residents moving fences and junk cars and what have you if we start going down this for some reason. Which I'm sure it makes sense. I don't it, but uh, I want to think about it more. Yeah. Uh, I think I think let's you've got to make a good point about the basic speed limit signs. I, I really feel that that is a town responsibility. And we should be doing that. Um, this, you know, the sensitive area signs that they put up and post out there. Uh, I think, I think that's great, and most people probably appreciate it. And as Mark says, maybe we should look the other way. It's like the slow uh, kids signs. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. So okay, sensitive area. I just have an ask of everybody while we're talking about this. <laughs> is to think about the enforcement side because we're talking about how we want to have a group of people talking about enforcement. We have speed limits in our list here. We have talking about, while well, we're talking about signs and we have penalties. And we're also talking about how we don't have people who want to enforce these, this ordinance essentially that we have right now. And if we're not responsible for having signs in the right we as a town are not responsible having, for having signs that match our ordinance and we have no way of 
governing because we're delegating, what does that mean for enforcement? I'm in the Duncan camp. We put the 25 mile ATV, 25 mile an hour sign. Maybe we own that and we put it maybe at entrances where ATVs would be most seen coming into town, We, you know, and on some of our back roads where they're allowed. All right. That, that I can wrap my mind around. Me too. Yes. And then it becomes enforceable. I love the, the sensitive area, but I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into sensitive areas. And we're not, and we're not gonna, you know, there's lots of signs, lots of highway signs that are, you know, curve ahead, um, you know, um, 25 miles an hour curve ahead. Those are advisory. Yep. Th those are not regulatory. And th that's why they're yellow. Yep. Um, so, you know, a speed limit sign is white with black lettering. And it's a certain size and it has regulatory meaning. So that you know, there are differences even under you know posting highways. I mean, if we really want to get a, if we really want to know that it's enforceable, if we can find somebody that was willing to write a ticket, um, you know, we could right. we could ask the question of that law enforcement agency. What's you know what's enforceable? Well, what's maybe it? we need to set up a demo ticket. We need to find a volunteer ATV person to speed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give them a ticket and then have them uh, contest it. Okay, next section is, oh, look at that, enforcement. Uh, I think we talked about enforcement. Um, next section is other laws. I mean, that's just a blanket statement that other laws may apply. Sorry, but where are you? Section, uh, page 59, section 11. Yeah. There we go, I got it, thank you. And then severability. Um, and it's just about the ordinance not being upheld by court. Uh, I have I have a suggestion that we might want to at least think about, and it, maybe it's something that Brian could look into with League as well. Um, to your point earlier, Adam, if if we if the select court adopts an ordinance and the petition is filed to repeal the ordinance, and the ordinance is repealed, you're absolutely right. The ordinance that we have in place right now remains in full force and effect. Um, conversely, if the ordinance is upheld, we want to make sure that the amended ordinance controls, not the prior approved ordinance. Well, so usually an ordinance has, when you amend an ordinance, there's usually a clause in there that says, if approved, this ordinance supersedes any other prior approved ordinances. There, there ought to be some I know there's some standard language that can be put in that we should. I'm surprised it isn't in this one, actually. They're model one. Well, they may not be thinking. I mean, I think this would be fine if it was a first time ordinance. Yeah. But if you're amending an ordinance. Before they increase their dues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're saying that should be a separate section, or is that well, it, it could be history? under the, it could be right next to the severability piece, but somewhere. Well, it, I, I would think I it's in the adoption history on that. Oh, it could be. Yeah, I've could seen be in the some version on, on a different ordinance. Uh, okay. I'm sure Brian knows what I'm talking I, about. I do. I don't remember the language off the top of my head, but I know I know what you're talking yeah. about. It appears frequently, I don't think, I think you're right that it isn't in here, but I have to, there's something to be aware of and I'll, I'll look for yeah. that either to already exist or work for it. Okay. You know, so, under penalties, mm -hmm. we might want to add another one. If the offender happens to be a pastor, <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> double it. <laughs> double it. <laughs> double the well, That would be sort of a sin. <laughs> that would be a sin. <laughs> <laughs> not to throw anything out, but you guys missed the law of 2020. We lobbied the state to uh, require helmets. That would be covered. Uh, and that the state is doing that or is not doing that now? The state yeah. 2020. July 2020 required elements after we lobbied. 
I got you. That's perfect. And I think that falls into all the reference statutes. Or I didn't in see it in the packet. Any reference can help. So that's why oh, I okay. Well, but it would but be it under state be, law. Well, if it goes it into a would, it state law, it would be under state law, but that might be a, we'll have to look into it, but that might be a good one when we're calling out that uh, 9C, where we call out the state law that we're going to enforce with our local enforcement officer. It's on page six of the packet. It's on 3506 Operation Prohibited Acts, Financial Responsibility, and Headgear. I think it's covered there. What was it? On packet page six at the end, that only old reference statute reference number. We just check on it because that was only for state bodies of water in the wintertime. Okay. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. We'll add it to the list. And Beth, I know you like definitions and under the model, um, under 3D. Um, it has other definitions found. I wonder if we should expand that to say other definitions and requirements found. So it, that would that would address Ken's point that the, mod, the regulation has been modified to require helmets. Now. Require registration. Require or registration, yeah. license, or and whatever all of the state requirements are. Right. Factory grade mufflers. I mean, one of the biggest concerns Ooh, is, is the noise. There's certainly, and since there's no, as far as I know, there's no inspection of ATVs. So they're not inspected, but there's clearly there's some are dressed dramatically. I like the, yeah, that's cool. I like the addition of uh, and requirements there. Sounds like everyone's on board. Okay, what else? Do you want to talk about roads? Are you ready? Sure. Yeah, we have to leave at 10, right? We're leaving at 10. We have enough time. We don't have to I leave at 10. We can leave right now, but. We don't have any place to go if we leave after 10. <laughs> I'm not staying here after 10. You guys I'm start. not really. <laughs> uh, I guess I would not like to do what Pike Park's done. For what? The roads? They identify the roads, the length of the roads, uh, 0.22 length, whatever it is, a mile. I hope we don't have to get into that level of detail. I, I, I contradict you on that. Really? What if we change one road? You'd have to change the whole one. No, you wouldn't have to change the whole ordinance. You sure. change the vote. Yeah. The road. I'd, I'd like to know with regard to specific roads, um, I, I, I would like to hear, um, you know, and I don't know that we need to do it right now, but maybe we could do it in, in writing or communication of some sort. I, I'd like to hear from the VASA group themselves if, if there are class four roads or class three roads that they're not writing and they have no intention of writing. Why would we why would we list them as, as even being open? So well, right now we have all class four and unpaid class three open, which means that any resident can I could ride an ATV up to my father's house yeah. because that road is open. So I don't think we want to restrict a road for residential use. And for clarity, Waterman Road is a class three unpaid road. I don't know how Waterman the thinks. It is. Okay. So that isn't that where you live, Sue. So it is open. Uh, it's ADVs. The, the only reason I'm the only reason I'm mentioning that is uh, I think it would be um actually sorry. Sorry, don't think one hold on one second. Your point is a really good one. Does the public the public doesn't always understand what that means by unpaid class three roads. Um, I don't always know what that means. I can speculate, but it doesn't mean I've actually looked it up. Um, is there an easy reference that people could go to? The, what I think of as the best reference is available online. It's, uh, you search for Vermont, uh, Vermont Municipal Roads by County or Vermont roads by county. 
you can go to the Monroe County, Johnson, uh, Johnson Town and Johnson Village and get very comprehensive roadmaps. Uh, and th those roadmaps are classed, they're coded, uh, so there's a legend for if it's class one, two, three, or four. It does not list paved or unpaved. Uh, and it also lists by town highway number, not roadmap. But it is the, the most accessible map that, it's also the definitive map. It's, this is the map that's recognized by the state about road classifications. Okay, thank you. Official town highway. Yeah. Thanks, Fran. All right, sorry, Duncan. That's a ball to spend hours looking at. It's really gripping. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, my, my point in raising the question was, and I, it's not a well formulated idea, so maybe I should keep my mouth shut, but it's never stopped <laughs> I'll let me. You know later. It's never stopped me in the past. Um, my, my thought was, are there, are, there, are there roads that the club is more interested in incorporating into their trail network? Um, and, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe the idea of you don't have to, you don't, if you're riding an ATV, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are wanting to ride on faster trail network systems. But, but on the other hand, um, you know, like the vast example, you don't have a right to ride on somebody else's land, you know, unless you've got the permission of the, of the land. So the, the whole idea of the vast, Trail network system was to make a place where snowmobilers could ride and you know be confident that they were you know doing what they wanted to do and in, in not bothering other people. Um, that, that's the only reason I raised raise the question. Well, we know of some. We know if they want access through Gould. We know they want access down Clay Hill. That's easy, right? Yeah. Um, but can or somebody from the club, would you like to respond to that? Do you um, already know what that is, means? We only mark corridors. You, if you guys look at the map thing, you'll see we didn't mark all the roads. Everything that we do mark is intended to get them in and out on the least amount of all the roads. So it's 37 and 42 are the two pages that contain max. And, and I'm quite sure it's not about that. It's about the job of the That's what in the club can only be for the residents. We don't send people on roads for no purpose. Whether that's it. Absolutely. We can get on everybody's land and just always with we would build trails like nothing. Now this is a really big one. I guess I'll do it all the Evan, is this? This is the rail system. Patrol. Is that the road that goes by? I believe that there is a trail at the end of Patch Road that meets up with Molag Road. Okay. Because they just have it listed. I'm not sure. It meets up Most right at Molag Road. Tim Sullivan. Joe Sue Sullivan. Maybe that's what Bob Molag was referring to when he said, as a landowner in the ATV club. But I thought that's because he lived on the road. But, um, we did that trail while we were doing Molag Road last year. This one here. Nice. I think the board gave Great permission to yeah. Tim's grandmother on the farm there. Tim lives there now, yeah. To pen that road. Didn't, didn't the board get permission to pen that road at one point? I think that, uh, I don't think we ever did pen it, but I think it's still a 5 4, but it's not identified on this map. It, it stops here. A certain area, and then we're through Sullivan, Colag, and I can't remember Cunningham. Cunningham. Okay. The holdup was um, the Hunter place, which Tim bought. It's been a little while since it's closed. 
sit up and looked up. Last I knew it was still the last door by the way. It went all the way through. That's the section that comes closer to 100 feet, right? Right. Yeah. Right. We don't use that. Right. Yeah. The snowmobiles didn't yep. either, I don't think, or they did years ago. Yeah. And the it's a very unique, it's a, uh, you know, or typical right away is a three rod. Here. That one's the width of a roller. Yep. Okay. The only road that I see on this that's not technically in the ordinance, but I have no problem with it because it is a dirt road segment, but plot road is technically a class two road. I would be fine adding that to our amended ordinance. Adding it as, a, as acceptable. Yeah, it's a dirt road with a speed limit of 35 miles an hour. It's just we get more money from the state for it. That's all. We should actually make all the roads class two. Maybe we pay less in taxes. They don't like that. <laughs> If you read the definition of what a class two is, it was a joke. but there are some that we could reclassify <laughs> yeah. and should. Right? There, there are a couple roads that are class three that might be eligible to upgrade to class two. Uh, well, yeah, that's for agenda, Brian, our agenda list. Yep. <clears throat> that's part of my mobile select board. That's too big a dimension. <laughs> right. We used to get class two money for mine road. We still yeah. don't. We do not. Not all the way up we the don't. Mine. <laughs> we threw that up. But other than that, I mean, the maps that provided seven. at least don't cover the majority of the roads that are actually open, from what I see. Do, do not. Do not. But I would be hesitant to just go and list specific class three roads, as Eric has said. If anything were to change, you know, we'd have to amend the whole ordinance. But also, if you know somehow uh, Green Mountain ATV riders or Vasa or whoever were to work with a landowner and get a trail opened up to alleviate some of um, you know the noise what have you we would have to amend the ordinance just to do that but if they already had access to a class three on paved road to go that extra two thousand feet we wouldn't have to have another three hour meeting about it unless unless we find out that it is acceptable to do an annual or 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 giving the board the flexibility to, to do um, you know, to revise the posting without revising. Yeah, I think that one needs some, some information. That actually doesn't list a lot of money. Yeah, what they actually have access to. Um, okay, so what I've heard so far about the roads we're talking about is and this is implied, but continue with class four, continue with class three unpaved, and a suggestion to add plot road. I want to add class three paved. How class many three. segments of road is that? Yeah, that's what I would. It's River Road wondering. East, River Road West, a uh, thousand foot apron on a couple of roads. Yeah. And that's it. It would be a lot of aprons. Mostly all, all, wait, aprons. say it again. It would be a lot of road aprons. Uh, we have quite a few class three roads that, you know, 100 feet from the entrance of the road is paved. Uh, Wickham Island. Wickham Island is a road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a little, there's a bit of, that's a good one that really. There's a little bit of pavement at the beginning. Wilson. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right beside it. Okay, so I think out in, what I'm hearing Over is used to have we're just mm -hmm. talking a little bit about like what we can remember, which isn't the right approach for having this discussion, I feel like. 
Um, so let's have a follow-up to get a full list of what those paved class three roads are. So what, what are you writing? Do you want to get a list of each of the highways? A list of specifically what would be added onto the ordinance if we were to say add on class three paved. Yeah. The devil's advocate. Yep. If we identify highways in our ordinance that are open to ATVs, what does that do to the residents who maybe live a mile off on another road? Sure. Don't know. I'm not suggesting we do it. I'm just suggesting that if we're going to talk about it, we should be informed. Yeah. What, what is, like if we said uh, uh, the ATV or uh, net trail is going to go down swamp road. Right. If we if we adapted what they said they're using. But what if a resident lives up high on Clay Hill or something? And why they, wouldn't, they wouldn't technically have the right to leave from their house. Exactly. Is that something we want? No. That's what Evan doesn't want. <laughs> well, we've already, I mean, you've already written down class four roads and on paved class three. That's what we already had. That's true. Or if we discuss it. Did by class, instead of identifying specific highways, we could open it up to all class four. Class three paved and unpaved. And we just said class three. Or just class three. And then uh, mm -hmm. we might have to identify class twos that specifically. Yeah. I, I would be more comfortable with that approach if I thought that we could <laughs> go go back and revisit that list um, by you know by posting because mm -hmm. What, what I would really like to see is, I think you alluded to the possibility of fast group working with an individual to get a trail, you know, that, that went around that. In, in, in that case, I think it would make sense to close off that short section of road and have the ATVs use the trail. Unless there was a resident on the road that wanted to use it. I, I guess you could, yeah, I don't know how you could word your ordinance to do that, but I suppose you could. I guess, I guess my, my point in trying to say that is if a landowner is willing to work with Bassett and Bassett puts in a trail to bypass a person who is really adversely impacted by noise, dust, whatever, um, that we should be encouraging the use of the trail rather than the road segment. And I think if we had the ability to look at that on an annual basis, that would be much, it would give us much more flexibility um, or any board much more flexibility than it's having to go back and amend the board. I don't think anybody likes the idea of having no. Um, along those lines, Duncan, glad you brought it up because I wanted to bring it up earlier. But along those lines, that ATV group that met in 2006, um, you know, I read through a lot of their minutes and I read through their final report, and it's included in a packet somewhere here in one of these piles. Um, ATV recommendations, page 27, it looks like maybe if I'm following this correctly. Um, I think it would be unfortunate if we didn't spend a little energy at least making sure that our board is familiar with what's in here. Because um, there is a lot of good stuff in here. And there was a lot of time and blood, sweat, and tears put into it. Um, and from very different points of view, if you read through the minutes. Um, this, this is not the minutes, by the way. This is just the final report. Right. 
Yeah. Oh, I was just saying Duncan was on the committee. I'm sure he's talking about. Okay. I, I wasn't. Sure. You're you you're listed. I know I'm I know I'm listed, but I think it was introduction only. Yeah. yeah, he was at he was at a meeting, it sounds like. Um this is oh this is a presentation. Uh, he was opening it up. Um but anyway, it's very interesting and it talks about a lot of the things we're talking about. Um And I just want to make sure before we get too far into all of this detail that we're considering it because there's a lot of good discussion happening. Um, and we've heard a lot of good feedback um, on both sides of the fence too. I'm gonna put that plug in there. And it does talk about a lot of the um, requirements that are already in the state statute that we have to worry about also. Okay. Um, so where do we go from here? Okay, here's what I heard on the road talk. Um, Duncan, I didn't take notes on what you said, but I'm sure that they're well captured. Um, but I did talk, I did hear us talk about um again keeping class four keeping class three unpaid consider uh class all class three and we talked about what that would mean if an action item on following up what on what that list actually is um for all remaining class three paved what does that actually mean in terms of real roads and real segments of road um a suggestion to open plot road up as part of the ordinance. Well, there was a conversation about a couple of class two roads. Yeah, I wasn't done yet. Still working through my list. Sorry. Uh, and then also talking about possibilities of other class two roads. Um, and then the also the talk about the annual posting, the annual list. And we're gonna we have an action on that one too. Um, Quarter after nine, what do we think? Is there more to discussion to be had to me? No. I would like to see us give more thought to, uh, I, I understand the attractiveness of simply referring to class three and class four roads. Um, but I think we should give some additional thought to that. Um, and there, there may be some roads that, you know, are more appropriate and some less appropriate. And, you know, if we do, if we do a shotgun approach, it's just, you know, it's just that. And again, I said, I, I would be more comfortable with that approach if I thought that we could go back and re revisit that, um, you know, without having to redo the ordinance. Uh, I really don't want to be in a situation where we have to, do the ordinance every year or every other year. I don't think anyone wants that. I am confident in that actually. The mark is on fire. I'm new. I'm really right. new. So I change ordinances at the top of my head. Um, but I, a little, to some extent, I'm curious about are there class three that just dead in, in dead in into a state road? or dead end somewhere which they will never be used or I guess they would go, they turn around and come back. So, so. yeah, I'm sure there's some, there's a bunch that just come down to Route 15. You know, the one that the plot road that goes over Waterville, now that's a state highway there, is that state highway open? Yes. We have some roads that are basically driveways to yeah. people's houses. No. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Believe it or not. Are you saying you don't want one word real loud in this order? That's a pretty good thing. You don't have a lot of traffic on your road. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but that's what I was thinking of, of roads that just drop down to Route 15. They generally go where we drive. Right. Well, that's. And that's part of those maps, at, too, Mark. Is looking at. So the contradiction I see is I like these maps, 
you know, um, but you want to be able to get on your ATV and drive on Collins Hill, which doesn't seem to be, I don't know. I don't actually have an ATV and I, I don't know, actually want to I do that. Know, but, I know, <laughs> what you may, but somebody. But somebody, yes. I understand your kind of, Yeah. Yeah, you, you're you're just not paid enough to have one yet. But you see the point I'm getting at. There's, right. there's a couple little things in there that might be interesting for me personally to know more about what is class three, what is class four, where do they actually, are they used? And is this, this would tie into yearly posting, would it? Is, if they're asking us to change things, what's posting, who's liable for posting? We can go down this. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think that our next step is let's reconvene at a later date to be with more with more information. Yeah, let's go get our action items taken care of. Once we have a good handle on when that can happen. Brian's just getting back from vacation, so we need to not totally swamp him with to do's. I'll be sending him a list of to do's later. <laughs> uh, but we need to totally not swamp him with to do's and let's schedule something following that. Also, I want to make sure that when we do get back together, not Monday, by the way, I don't mean that when I say when we get back together, but when we do get back together, I would like to make sure that we have a good idea of who is interested in that enforcement discussion. Um, it's an important one. Isn't it's one there that going here for that? I keep hearing, my I keep hearing his <laughs> voice whenever it comes up. So for me, um, but whether or not Eric does it, I think it, it needs to be done. Um, so we should get that going. Shall we adjourn? We that shall adjourn. Can I make Remote one morning. suggestion? Not 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 to burden Brian with too many extra things, but. Um, I think like you it. can relatively easily print out an 11 by 17 yep. map of the town highways. I think it would be really useful for all of us to have a copy of you know, the roads and their classifications. We're going to get some maps on these walls. Yeah. It's yeah. going to happen. Color coding one. The map, yeah, basic maps are pretty easy. I'm really thinking about something big enough that the audience and other folks can use it too for for our next discussion. We're going to get really big maps. We've talked about this. It's going to happen. <laughs> and they're going to liven it up in here. Uh, OK. Work good. Can I make one comment? You may. I think uh, supporting both sides against APD or whatever the role is in the ordinance. Um, I just want to say, like, when you guys are looking at the class three roads specifically, um, like Ken was mentioning, so we we have our uh, corridors like you see on the map. Mm -hmm. So say you you know you decide to open up the class three roads, you know all of them or whatever. If you go that route, like we as a club would not publicly post that on our maps because we don't want traffic on every single road. You know we want them. You know we have our certain trails they take to get to the next town or say there say that so and that would help out the people that live on the roads that are posted on the map you know if they want to connect to a trail that's technically on the map they still could because most people that ride the area if they're coming from up north say down here they're not going to look at the town where it's usually oh this road's over like the people want you know it's easy convenient they're you know, they're going to look at the ride command app that we post or the visual map you get when you buy a pass a sticker mm -hmm. or a sign. Or a sign. So um, that was just, you know, I don't want, you know, maybe some people don't want them on their roads or this and that, like saying, oh, you know, or decides to want to blast your roads. We're going to put lines every single road on our map. We want you to have Because the thing is, for us, we try to, you know, enforce law as much as we can. It's true, the more roads we have, the more chance of a mistake or a headache. So we're going to get them in, we're going to get them out, but still people will put back to those trails that they want. So, so I just want to Thank you for that. That's a good point. Kyle? Yeah, I just. I'm still, by the way, I'm still doing the two minutes for everybody. Okay. You're good. Um, so I'm just concerned with this entire conversation because we're operating with no actual enforcement. 
So everything that's been talked about goes back to Duncan's original point of I feel like the horse or the cart's being put for the horse. And the fact that there's no way to enforce anything that's been talked about, and yet there's talk of expanding roads that ATVs can potentially be on. So that's really concerning. I mean, I've talked to Mark many times. He's told Farmer Select Board many times that he is not able or interested in enforcing ATV ordinances. There's just no way that his department can do it. So who is going to do it if it's not the Sheriff's Department? I heard maybe our constables. Well, constables tend to be, you know, uh, good buddies with other people. Um, and so I fear about cronyism. I fear that it may not um, work the way that, you know, it, it, it ethically should be. So um, I just, yeah, I'm not really sure how we can have this conversation without that enforcement piece totally certain. Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor Al, you don't have anything to say? I can always have something to say. Everybody's fine. Never seen him so okay. quiet. <laughs> um, so I think this is a special meeting. I won't ask about additional items, and I think we can call it adjourned at 9 25. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.